Hello and welcome to this new video. So we are still in section 0 0.3 and in this video we are going to explain the inverse transformation method for generating uh, some kind of uh, random variables, continuous random variables mainly. Okay. So let us begin with this observation. If capital F is the cumulative distribution function of some continuous random variable, uh, we would like to generate random samples from this distribution. Okay? Now, we know that the cumulative distribution function, which is uh, called in French uh, fonction de répartition, so the, the CDF, of a random variable actually is increasing but suppose for the moment that it's strictly increasing sometimes it's strictly increasing actually on some interval i okay in this case f has an inverse right because it's injective and the inverse is also strictly increasing okay so so if u is uniformly distributed on 0 1 we claim that the inverse image of u under f is a random variable which follows the which has a cdf capital f okay this is not difficult to prove actually because since u is uniform on 0 1 then the probability that u is less or equal than a is a if a is between 0 and 1 right by definition we already uh, observed that earlier. So, okay, so the probability that capital X, which is F minus one of U, is less or equal than X is the pro, so it's the probability that F minus one of U is less or equal than X. And now the event F minus one of U less or equal than small X, since capital F is strictly increasing, this event is equivalent, is the same as the event u less or equal than f of small, small x, right? It's the same event. So they have the same probability. And now, since f of x is a CDF, so it's between 0 and 1, therefore, and u is uniform, therefore, this probability is just capital F of x. So we proved that this variable, random variable capital X, which is f minus 1 of u, has a CDF capital F. And that's it. So this leads us to the following algorithm. So, but there's a problem here because we have, in order to find f minus one, we have to solve the equation capital F of x equal u, right? So you have to usually we do it on on a paper, and so okay, unless you have a sophisticated software for to solve this equation for you, but we shall illustrate this how to solve this equation in some simple cases. So this work, this prelim, preliminary work that you do on a paper gives you F minus one. Okay. And the next step, we generate a, a uniform uh, random number between zero and one, and we know how to do that. And just take the inverse image of F. So just apply F minus one, because F minus one is just a function here. Okay, and that's it. So this is the, uh, the, the main algorithm using the inverse transformation method for generating a continuous random variable. Okay, so let us see some examples. Okay, how can we generate the exponential distribution? Okay. Recall that a random variable follows an exponential distribution with parameter lambda if the density, the PDF, the density of x is zero if t is negative and lambda times exponential of minus lambda t if t is bigger or equal than zero. So when we integrate that, because there's a relation between uh, the CDF and the density, so the CDF is the integral from minus infinity to x of f of t. Right? Just integrate. So if you do that, We'll find so we have to distinguish between two cases. If x is negative, you get zero because small f is zero. 
If not, then we just integrate between 0 and x if x is positive, because from minus infinity to 0, it's 0. When we integrate that, we get precisely uh, minus e minus lambda t between 0 and x, and we get this form. Okay, so this is the CDF of the exponential random variable, this parameter lambda. Okay, now, can we solve this equation? We have to solve the equation capital F of x equal u. And of course, capital F is strictly increasing on the interval 0 infinity. Okay, so we solve the equation on 0 infinity. Okay. <clears throat> this is easily solved because you get uh, e minus lambda x is 1 minus u. So we take the len, the logarithm, and you get this answer. So this is f minus 1. And so we can, if we apply the general algorithm that we just explained, we get the following particular case, but instead of generating a random number and then taking 1 minus this, uh, if, uh, if u is, a run, is uniformly distributed on 0, 1, then 1 minus u is also uniformly distributed on 0, 1. So we gain one step, okay? So this is the algorithm, the, it's a particular case of algorithm 0 0.8. So we, if we want to generate an exponential random variable with parameter lambda, we first generate a random number u as usual, and then take minus logarithm of this random number and divide by lambda. And that's it. So it's very, very, very easy. And now, I suggest that you stop a little bit and try to uh, implement this algorithm for some particular values of lambda in Python. And as usual, you will have to draw histograms to test the correctness of the algorithm. And of course, as usual, we compare with the NumPy and SciPy built-in functions, which are, in principle, more efficient than our implementation and the next exercise you have to apply algorithm 0 0.8 to the Cauchy distribution the Cauchy distribution uh, is given so the PDF of a Cauchy random variable is, is given by this formula okay and by the way this is an example of a distribution with infinite expectation because uh, no, the, actually, the, the expectation is zero, but the, uh, the random variable is not summable because if you take, if you try to evaluate the uh, the, expect, the expectation of absolute value of x, you will get an, an infinite, an integral which is infinite, actually. But it's not a big deal here. This is not our uh, uh, concern. So what you do is to first compute the CDF by an integration and then solve the equation, get f minus 1, and then apply the algorithm, uh, 0 0.8, okay? And as usual, we compare with NumPy and SciPy built-in functions. A very important uh, distribution in uh, probability, especially in the, which has applications in actuarial in science and uh, finance is the Pareto distribution in economics also so it's given by this formula with two parameters a and b so it's zero up to a certain value b and then it is um, a negative exponential okay so it decreases actually uh, so here also you have to write an algorithm for generating samples from a Pareto distribution. So the procedure is the same. So you have to first find the CDF by integration. It's not difficult. And then uh, invert, find the inverse of the CDF. Okay. On an interval where it's increasing, actually. This is easy. Okay. <clears throat> and then take some values some particular values of B and A, and 
draw histograms as usual and compare with the built-in functions of Python. Okay, so you have a lot of work to do now. And let me end this video by a remark that actually what the, the method that we um, explained in this video can be generalized to the cases where the CDF is not necessarily strictly increasing, okay, and not necessarily continuous. In this case, we define, we can all, always define a generalized inverse of F by this formula. Okay, so you can prove actually that when f is strictly increasing, these two f minus and f minus one coincide are the same. Okay, so in general, actually, we have a similar algorithm. We just apply take f minus f minus, which is not necessarily the inverse of f, but it's a generalized inverse. Okay, so we have to find f minus by this formula, and then you apply the algorithm, and it works when uh, the CDF is the CDF of a discrete values, actually. And in the literature, especially in the book, in the book of Doug Punar that I stated in the references, in the lecture notes, uh, the general algorithm that we explained for generating a discrete random variable is a particular case of this. Okay, so there's a link between what we did before and that. Okay, so if you want to go further to deepen your understanding, but this is a, an introductory course to Monte Carlo methods, to stochastic simulations. So uh, we don't have time to dig very deep uh, in, Mon in uh, the subject of Monte Carlo because it's a big subject actually. And uh, there are still many unsolved problems and you can do a PhD in that field if you like. Okay, so this concludes uh, this first video about the inverse transformation method. Okay, so we'll continue in the next video. Thank you for your attention.